Remember, today we will be teaching you inotropic drugs. Remember, this is a continuation of our previous lecture that are available for you on YouTube with the Autonomic Nervous System Pharmacology Part 1. Now it is in, available in shape of Autonomic Nervous System Pharmacology Part 2. So, you know the importance of inotropic drugs that what are inotropic drugs? You are quite familiar with that, that drugs that increases the force of contraction of myocardium are called inotropic drugs. Now this is a myocardium. This is a myocardium and this is the exterior or the extracellular spaces and this is the intracellular spaces. And this is sodium potassium ATPS system that exists on the myocardium. And uh, you know there are beta receptors predominantly present in the level of heart. So I have shown a beta one receptors at the level of myocardium then the sodium potassium ATPS system where the potassium is exchanged with sodium and then there is the ion exchange system as well where the sodium is exchanged with calcium so now let we see and how it happens but remember these are the secondary messenger system as well now having said that so one different or certain stimuli comes so what happened potassium goes inside and once the potassium goes inside so the sodium is exchanged with that now once sodium is exchanged with that so it keeps the concentration gradient in a very polite and harmonized way since this is because of an involvement of energy that is sodium potassium ATPS system so now if you block this sodium potassium ATPS system with the active glycoside like digoxin so what happens blocking this will lead to blocking of these um, influx of calcium potassium into the cells therefore the sodium won't go out and thus the sodium level inside the cell will be increased and once the sodium level inside the cell is increased so then it's exchanged for this following this ion exchange pathway when the sodium goes out through this ion exchange pathway what happens then the calcium comes ends and this is very important that the cytosolic calcium level is now increased and when the cytosolic calcium level is increased so this will lead to an inotropic response keep in mind that calcium is important for the well of the myocardium therefore calcium is is helping in the contraction of the myocardium or myocardic myocytes now, this is very interesting once uh, inotropic drugs come like norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine and dabutamine. We had just given the detail of norepinephrine or epinephrine in the previous section, previous video number one of the autonomic nervous system where we have reflected that at events happening at the level of adrenergic nerve ending. So you can go and see that as well. Now having said that, so what happens? these inotropics comes and attach with these beta-1 receptors then they stimulate the adrenal cycle system and this energy is the secondary messenger system consequently the ATP is converted into cyclic MP and its level is raised and once its levels are raised so it is going to increase the protein phosphorylation and again it is going to produce an inotropic response now it's very interesting that that there is an enzyme phosphodiesterase that is going to degrade this cyclic AMP into 5 AMP and this is this is now this metabolite is an active. So the degradation of cyclic AMP is because of the but because of the uh, phosphodiesterase enzyme and if we inhibit this phosphodiesterase enzyme consequently the level of cyclic AMP will be raised and the level of cyclic AMP is once raised so it will lead to 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 increasing the phosphorylation of protein and, and inotropic responses there now in presence of a beta blocker you see once this is this 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 uh, inotropes or new norepinephrine is an endogenous uh, neurotransmitter you see if that is now detached from receptor so what happened now it is detached now and interestingly a competitive antagonist like beta blocker is now coming here beta blockers mean propanolol, etinolol, metoprolol or any of the beta blocker that is having competition 
for this beta 1 receptor with these deep dopamines. So what will happen? So they are going to decrease the, the, the cyclic AMP level because this beta blocker will have a negative impact on the adrenal cellular system through the G inhibitory ligand protein and consequently cyclic AMP level is decreased. Decreasing the cyclic AMP level will lead to a negative inotropic response. Now the heart rate will be decreased. So this is very strong concept in the in the in the in both in either way around whether your patient is suffering from hypotension or suffering from hypertension. And so how can you manage that? Because this inotropic drugs and this inotropic mechanism is very important for maintaining the normal hemodynamics. Now having said that this is important. This tea, tea which we usually take, that is a household remedy. Tea contains theophylline, caffeine, and other xanthine and methyl xanthine derivatives. So, like theophylline. So, what happens? They have inhibitory effect on this phosphodiesterase enzyme. Thus, a strong cup of tea, a strong cup of tea which is having theophylline and caffeine, is a phosphodiesterase enzyme inhibitor. Thus, it will increase the cyclic AMP level. So, a strong cup of tea is an a positive anotropic, anotropic agent. That is why perhaps it is also used in the management of asthma. But they have other secondary uh, messenger system, the involvement of beta-2 receptor there at the level of lungs. Now, having said that, now if beta blocker drugs are there or there by chance there is an ingestion of the beta blocker, you see, or beta blocker poisoning can so there is a hormone glucagon glucagon goes directly it goes to the transmembrane and directly stimulate the cyclic amp so once it is going to directly stimulate the cyclic amp therefore glucagon is also used in the management of beta blocker poisoning as well so in nutshell if i am going to repeat it for you so what happened beta these inotropic drugs are very important in the management of shock Glucagon is very important in the management of or reversal of beta blocker poisoning and same is the case for digoxin where it is used in the management of congestive heart failure when the heart is weak and cannot pump the blood into the heart. So therefore this this inotropic model 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 this model is very important and what have but just food for thought what happens when a beta blocker is given to a patient suffering from heart failure that is why perhaps beta blocker is contraindicated in stage 3 or stage 4 heart failure though there are some controversial reports regarding to use a beta blocker in the early stage of heart failure but still the cardiologist thinks that low doses of beta blocker can be helpful in the management of early heart failure so for that you can go and study the new york heart association classification for heart failure and that may be helpful for you as well. Now, what is what will be the effect of calcium supplements when this is given in combination with digoxin? Remember, digoxin increasing the cytosolic calcium, and if calcium is it is given along with calcium, so this may be there may be a drug drug interaction. So you should be quite vigilant about that. And what happens when a strong cup of tea is given to a person who is hypertensive, uh, who is taking uh, much more tea, strong cup of tea, and and that is cardiotonic as well. So your patient may come across with palpitation as well. So try to avoid this, this, this the tea, especially in those patients who are having a high heart rate along with hypertension. Thus, in nutshell, BP blood pressure is 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 increased because of increasing the stroke volume due to cardiotonic effects and and increasing the heart rate because of the positive inotropic effect and positive chronotropic effect of these dopa on these these um, inotropic drugs now this is a slide just to remind you the previous slide that is we presented in the autonomic nervous system uh, lecture first some priorities of inotropic drugs like adrenaline, noradrenaline for alpha, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 receptor that will just refresh your knowledge and then comparison of some of the inotropic drugs like dopamine and vitamin. you see 
the adrenaline, noradrenaline, and the isoprenaline comparison is in this slide, whereas the dopamine and dobutamine comparison is in this slide. So, how you will read this? Because dopamine is having a doric effect and indirect. Doric means that it is going to going to uh, stimulate dopamine will come it is going to stimulate these receptors so this means a direct effect indirect effect mean that dopamine will come and now it is converted into norepinephrine and at the dinergic ending and once a stimulus of enough amplitude comes fuses the vesicle so it will be released, released into the synapse and this will further attach with beta 1 receptor so this is now an indirect effect so you should be quite vigilant to understand or differentiate between a doric and indirect effect. Both dopamine and dobutamine are having a vasodilatory effect at the level of renal mesentery. But what is important? Important is that dopamine in high doses have vasopressor activity, whereas it's only it has only doric effect on the receptors, and dopamine is 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 pre up and doric effect. I hope now you refresh your knowledge just just you can compare and refresh your knowledge as well regarding the adrenergic nerve and like what a nutshell what happens that that the cardiovascular system through the beta 1 stimulation of beta 1 receptor by the positive nootropic drug that increasing the heart rate increasing the force of contraction increasing the automaticity and increasing the conduction velocity of the heart will will lead to uh, increase in blood pressure and this is what we need sometime inotropic drugs in the management of shock. I hope now you understand that. Thank you very much.